Reporting is the ultimate output of any software, really. I mean, any software that requires any sort of entry or processing of data, the whole reason we do that is so that we can get information out of it. So naturally, I was very excited to take a look at Sage One's reporting area, especially after they rolled out the recent updates, which have now been rolled out. And as I take a look, you can see that there are some great reports. They have all the reports that you're going to want to run for sure as a standard, and even some that we're going to take a look at that I think provide an enhancement, even though you might not have thought of them ahead of time. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like. Now it's time to get into the reporting area of Sage. And for that purpose, I've switched over to a, a sample data file that's got some real data in it. The, um, not real data, but, you know, data. Uh, more so than what I had up until now. I just kind of started my own uh, sample file and, and started populating it. So it was kind of like from zero. And I like teaching software that way because I find that from my own experience, when I look at a, a, a software application that I haven't learned before, and I can see it with all its data populated. It looks amazing, but I always, I always find myself feeling a little like overwhelmed about, well, how do I get it? How do I get a blank file to look like that, right? So that's why when I'm teaching these uh, products, I often like to start with a blank slate, so to speak, and start filling it in so you can see how that comes together. That's why, like I showed you in the very first lesson, one of the first things I ever want to do is I just want to get a simple transaction posted and I want to run the balance sheet in PL and make sure I can get it to do that. I like I like seeing that picture sort of come to life. So now we're going to work with some data because we're going to look at the reporting uh, functionality that's now available in Sage One. They've added a lot of stuff to it, and it's really exciting and impressive, actually. So I'm starting us off back on our summary with the Getting Started tab. Let's go over right here to Sales, because to me, this is the beginning of the reporting, and this is some of the most exciting stuff. I mean, this is what I'm going to expect my clients are going to love when they start using Sage One. So. You get in here and you look at the sales and you see this nice little sales graph, right? Most of us are visual people, so we'd much rather see something like this. Then down over here, notice, and see how much different it is when you actually have data in there. So now we can see outstanding sales invoices overdue. We have quotes, right? How many have we won? So this is a little CRM-like area here where it shows us how many, out of all the estimates we've created, how many have actually been turned into invoices, how many we've won, right? It's always good information to have. Hey, I'm really winning 31%. I want to win 69%. Uh, then, of course, down here we have our top five customers, top error outstanding. So very kind of typical what you'd expect to see in terms of uh, key performance indicators, KPI. And, of course, when we get into our course on SageView, you're going to see KPI on steroids, quite frankly. I'm excited to do that course, which is coming right on the heels of this one. In fact, likely by the time you're watching this, that one's already out, too. So we've got our sales uh, reporting dashboard right here, our expenses reporting dashboard, same thing. We're looking at our expenses. Expenses are going up. Might want to jump back over here. Sales are going up, but not, it doesn't look like by as much as expenses, right? Always pay attention to the scale, though. This is only going up to 2,000. Sales are up to 2,500. But still, at a quick glance, just jumping between these two tabs, it's looking like our expenses are going up faster than our sales, and that could be an indicator that something needs to be looked at, or maybe we're behind on recording all our sales. These are the kinds of things that as bookkeepers and accountants going forward, we're going to be, need to become more concerned with, because the data entry is being done for us, right? Sage 1, we're going to be able to download our banking. I mean, I've been manually entering stuff, but of course, you probably noticed when I go into the banking area that you can link up your bank account and download and, and, and you know match up your bank feeds very easily. So... That's all here in Sage too. So Sage really is, you know, right up there with the other cloud accounting products that a lot of us are accustomed to using. Definitely need to take a look at this one. And frankly, I love the interface. Don't tell anyone I said. That. Actually, tell everyone I said that because it's true. I really love the interface. Let's look at the cash flow statement. How important is this? It's extremely important to your average business owner. This is the thing they care about the most, and they're going to love that. Your clients are going to love that they can come in here. Notice your filters. I can select one account or all of my accounts and so on change the date range before we run that let's look down below right and then we're gonna get a quick glance here at here's cash flow in cash flow out closing balance liability to offset and then the net you know when all is said and done this is what we expect to have it that's our forecast right so and of course if we change any of these parameters and let's say I want to go back a month and I want to see it reflect more then I can click that and run the cash flow statement report and it'll update for me. 
And there it is. So just a longer period of time, but evidently my sample data doesn't actually even start until May 16th, so backing it up didn't really change much, right? Um, let's see what happens if I go forward. July. And now, look, now that I'm kind of changing parameters, look what it can, I've got some new options here. I can view a detailed breakdown. I can export this to a CSV or a PDF. So again, just really cool features here in terms of what I can do at a glance to see what's going on with my company or with my client's company. Okay, now let's go right into the actual reporting area. I'm just going to click reporting. Obviously, you see there's choices here in the dropdown, but let's just click reporting so we can look at the whole reporting dashboard. Now, we have uh, management reports, your standards, your profit and loss balance sheet, ARAP, right? That's your basic management right there. Uh, detail reports, uh, sales day book, purchases, profit analysis, general ledger, right? Uh, then we have our cash reports, the cash flow forecast and statements we were just kind of looking at. So that's what you can access from that summary dashboard. One of the things that I got very excited when I saw, when I was looking at the reporting area right here in Sage 1, was the unreconciled transactions report. This is something that in every other piece of accounting software that I've ever worked with, I've had to go ahead and customize in order to get this information. And yet it's something that comes up almost all the time, especially when I'm taking on a brand new client. And what I mean by that is as follows. I'm often going to check that the reconciliations are being done accurately. In other words, that the reconciled balance in the accounting software accurately matches the last statement that was supposedly reconciled. However, what will often be the case when I get a new client in, and as I'm doing that analysis, is I'll see that the register balance is much lower, let's say, than what the reconciled or bank balance shows. And of course, I immediately want to look into things like that. What it usually indicates is that I have a lot of unreconciled transactions, more specifically, checks that I may have recorded in anticipation of paying somebody, not in anticipation, but by way of attempting to pay somebody, and, and that they never cleared. And sometimes it could mean there's duplicate checks out there. So it's important to be able to check for this. And the unreconciled transaction report on that basis is something that is very obvious to me, should be there included. And sure enough, it's right here in Sage One's reporting area. You're going to see what it looks like in just a second. Um, I love this, that they have included this, unreconciled transactions. I mean, in other accounting software, I've had to go manually create this report, and it's something I do frequently. In fact, I'm in the process of on onboarding uh, an accounting client right now. One of the first things I do is I check the reconciliation, and uh, the, reconcili the reconciled balance ties to the bank statement, but I noticed the register balance for this client was much less then, uh, in fact, it was very negative most of the time compared with what the reconciled balance says. So I said, okay, we must have some big or lots of uh, uncleared outstanding payments. So a report like this is going to show that to us in like two seconds flat. We're going to be able to say, okay, this is why the register balance is so negative. Then, of course, the question of analyzing what's in there, and based on that, should we be voiding some of these payments? Are they really old, you know, what, or what's the story? We can figure that all out. So I love the unreconciled bank transactions report, and I love that they just thought about providing that so I don't have to go customize it. Uh, unallocated receipts or payments, so that makes sense. It could be, and we've seen this happen a lot, you know, you post an invoice, you receive a payment on it, then without thinking you delete the invoice, and now you have this unidentified flying uh, uh, debit or credit. It's an unidentified flying credit or a UFC in your accounts receivable. So uh, this will help us track down any of those sorts of things. So what they've done here is they've provided us with a lot of the reports that we'd otherwise be looking to go customize, and I love that. Uh, we've got our trial balance, we've got a periodic trial balance, and of course the audit trail, which is really, really, really important, especially when you start getting into situations where you have many users. Uh, and of course we can do a list report looking right at the chart of accounts. Over here on the right, I have my detail reports. I kind of touched on this. Let's go look at a sales uh, day book report, right? And so now it's looking in. I have sales from June 1 and June 2, and it looks like that's everything. I can choose to filter this further. So right now we're looking at it for this month. Let's do last month because it looks like most of our stuff is in May. And boom, there it is. And now type. We can say just show me sales invoices. So again, I have um, you know great features here that will quickly allow me to get it what I need. And then look what I can do. So let's say I only care about invoices for some reason. right? So I'm going to choose that. And it looks like that's all we have. And then I can click Export. And I have a choice, CSV or PDF, which is great, because PDF is what's going to the client so that they can't change anything and say that I sent them something wrong. 
CSV is what's going to me, so I can move things around, change them, and sort and subtotal and do pivot tables and whatever else I might like to do with that information now that it's in Excel. Let's go back over here. Uh, the general ledger report is going to be one that if you're not used to running, you're going to want to get used to running this. Let's go last month again. I think we have more data there. And boom, so this pretty much shows me transaction by transaction. Again, note the little, the fine print here at the bottom. I've got a two-page report with total records of 11. Again, it's sample data, and we only have about a month's worth here. But you get the idea of how this works. So in the reporting area, now the question is going to come up, and I sort of touched on this uh, a, a couple moments ago in case you picked up on it, which is can I customize my reports? And the answer is not yet. Again, that's coming. I've spoken with my friends at Sage, and I'm pretty sure if I understood them correctly, that is something they are working on. Can't say when for sure. It'll be out, but you can expect that it'll be out someday. Uh, Sage Payment Solutions, online payment reports. So you can remember I said something about how the fact that we have uh, banking information in the customer profile. Let's click on this and see what this looks like. So we have a Sage virtual tr terminal, which means you can accept payments here. Um, obviously, I don't have an account set up for this, so I can't really show it to you. But it's here. Uh, sales tax reports, profit analysis. Let's take a look at this. And then let's filter it. We'll go for last month again. Okay, so what are we looking at here? I have got numbers here. I've got net 642.50, profit amount 642.50. So this looks like uh, projects, right? I've got customers. So let's take a look at this one, Eagle Software Inc. Right, it looks like my net is 609, my cost was 22, and my profit based on that is 587 or 96%. Let's go click in and see what we can get out of this. So here's an invoice. Right, it, it shows us that a uh, uh, part paid issued, uh, amount paid 350, amount outstanding, and there it is. There, training services, training materials. So again, you can drill around on that, on, on all this stuff from these reports very easily. Um, in fact, let's go back. Let's run a balance sheet. And there's my checking account. Let's click on that. And now I've got a, a check register report, essentially. Again, pages one of two, total records 11. Let's say I just want to say custom would be 5, 1, 15 until today. All transactions. And I've got my transactions here. Um, looks like we don't really start with anything until May 20th. Go on to page two. Now, you may also be looking for an option that you might expect to see to say, hey, can I can I show more than you know these 10 or 11 records here? How many is it? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Can I show more than 10 per page? Uh, there's no option for that yet. But again, if enough people yell at my friends at Sage and request it, then it may very well become a feature. So if that's something you want to see, then request it. But keep in mind that you can also filter these for different kinds of things. So for a general ledger report like this where I just drilled into the bank account, you can certainly further uh, filter this down. So we want just, let's say, bank payments, right? And there's no, like, run report or refresh. I kind of like that, the fact that it's, when I change the option, it just does it. It just does it. Let's go with revenue payment. Nothing's showing up there. So, you know, you can play around with these sample files to see. No guarantees you'll get results. It just depends on what was in there. So let's go back to all. Let's see what was in here. So here's the type. We have other payment and some customer receipts and then a vendor payment. So if we go to customer receipt, receipt it there. So And again, you can filter this data down and export it to Excel and have at it in Excel. That's what I, As long as there's an Excel export option, I'm pretty happy most of the time. So you've got your reports here. You've got, you have enough here to get it whatever you really need to be able to get at. And then, like I said, you can export it into Excel. Worst case scenario, um, you know, run the general ledger, dump that into Excel, and then you pretty much have everything. And then you can do whatever you need to. Uh, if there's really sort of some kind of a customized report that none of these reports uh, sort of do the job for, so to speak. 
Um, but you have all the stuff that you need for sure to be able to properly run and analyze uh, your client's company files. And as I started out to say at the beginning of the lesson, if we go back to the summary and we look at the cash flow statement on the cash flow forecast, I can almost guarantee you this is where your clients are going to be spending most of their time. They're going to be looking at this all the time. They're going to want to see in the cash flow forecast what is my net balance going to be. How much, that's what clients want to know. They want to know two things. How much money do I make? How much money do I have in the bank, right? What do they make? What do I have in the bank? That's all they want to know. That's all they care about. Of course, it's our job to educate them to care about more as accountants and bookkeepers, and hopefully you'll do that. But uh, in the meantime, right here, I think you've got a gorgeous interface, a gorgeous dashboard that you can use to show your clients uh, how powerful Sage can be in terms of getting them the information that they really care about most in a glance. And then we're going to get into our next course on Sage View, which is going to take this kind of reporting concept and multiply it by about 100 because we're going to be able to customize our own KPIs and create dashboards based on Sage 1. And it also uh, can pull data from QuickBooks. So if you have clients in QuickBooks, they can use SageView on their data file so that you can uh, you know, use SageView on that data. So either way, uh, it's definitely a product you're going to want to check out, even if you have your clients in the other accounting software. And that, my friends, is what I've got for you so far on reporting. As always, if you have questions, visit our answers form at schoolofbookkeeping.com. If you're not a student, become one so that you can get access to our answers forum right here at schoolofbookkeeping.com. As always, I hope you had fun and learned something along the way. I look forward to getting your questions. I look forward to answering them. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you in our next course. There's a lot more that I could show you about Sage 1 that would obviously have taken us beyond a four-lesson course, but I wanted to at least start with this overview of the major and most important areas of the accounting software. We've looked at how to get things set up, we've looked at the revenue cycle, we've looked at the expense cycle, and now you've got to look at the output or the reporting area of Sage 1. It's my hope, of course, that you'll try this product out because I think you'll find it's very useful and even powerful in terms of what you can offer your clients with it, and that you'll find it's very easy to use, especially because the interface is so nice. And based on that, I'm hoping you'll dive into this product and ask your questions, jump into our answers forum. I can't wait to start working with more people on Sage One and what it can do for you and your clients.